Son, 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 the ending of this comic is amazing. What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with Avengers Twilight. As always, if you need to get caught up, there'll be a link to the playlist. But the long and short of this is that the United States in the future is ruled by corrupt corporations and a corrupt government and James Stark, the son of Tony Stark, is kind of at the head of it all. And Captain America is effectively leading a ragtag group of rebels to bring the whole thing down. So what this does is this picks up with James Stark, the son of Tony, screaming at the president of the United States, <laughs> which is kind of a funny thing because what's going on here is word has reached the ears of everybody that Captain America's team, which is now referred to as the defenders, are taking these pot shots, right? They're defending people from corrupt cops and different things along those lines. But keep in mind, right? Corporations run everything. And so when you have the president who's saying things like, we're not gonna take out Captain America because he's a patriot, right? He's an icon. Even if people don't really believe in him anymore, if they were to attack him and kill him in front of everybody, he would end up becoming a martyr and they would have to deal with a society that would rise up against them. Instead, what happens is James basically tells the president, we're bringing in the Thunderbolts. And this kind of shocks the president because he's like, we're really gonna do this on American soil? Like they're Americans, right? And that's the response to James, which is like, yeah, what better way to deal with Americans than to bring in the Thunderbolts, right? These heavy hitters. Now, the president initially responds and says, no, that's not going to happen. But then he's like shut down immediately and he's told, our money at Stark Industries put you in this White House and it put you in your seat. So do what all good presidents do, sit down, keep your mouth shut and do what the money tells you to. And so what you do is you switch over to basically the assembling of the Thunderbolts. Now, it's not the Thunderbolts that you're traditionally familiar with, which is to say some team of like supervillains working on an actual team itself. Instead, it's really the Thunderbolts in name only, but they're effectively soldiers that are all incredibly capable in their own way. One of them is Bullseye. But what I'm gonna tell you right now is this is not the Bullseye that you're familiar with, and this character is more Hawkeye than Bullseye. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we get further into it. Now, unlike the main Marvel Universe and the Fall of X stories, Kamala Khan here is pretty dope. And in fact, you get this amazing moment with her later on down the line. But she's got kids now, and she's even got grandkids now. And so when Captain America comes to her and tells her, we need you to come back and we need you to be a superhero, her response is no, because it's a suicide run to do something like that, right? One of the things to remember that we talked about in the first video is that there was an event called H-Day, right? Basically, where things went sideways, seemingly the Incredible Hulk lost his mind, and like, multitudes of people died. And ever since then, the world turned against superheroes. I don't know how this story ends, but I feel like the whole thing of H-Day was like a false flag event, right? It was orchestrated by the government to seize control. Who knows? But Kamala Khan turns down Steve Rogers. And we don't really get what her motivation is outside of potentially the idea. She doesn't want to put like her children or her grandchildren in danger, but a lot of it seems to be predicated more on the idea that she doesn't believe in superheroics anymore. Like a lot of other people out there she's just kind of become disillusioned with the idea of superheroes but then you find out that down in her basement she listens to a pirate broadcast of like the defenders and that's one of the cool things that goes on because the team is basically operating underground they don't really have any kind of official news channels because the news is controlled and so what they do is they broadcast on pirate channels that people who are part of the resistance or fans of the resistance can listen to to find out where they're striking next what's going on and so what you find out is that the grand plan of Captain America in the here and now, this is not the ending that I'm talking about, but the plan of Captain America and really the defenders is to basically broadcast out to the entirety of the United States what the government is actually doing. Because the way things work in America at this point in the future, there's what the government actually does, then there's what they tell the people they do, and what the news tells the people based on what the government tells the news to tell people. And so as far as the individual is concerned out there in the world, all the different supervillains have basically all just been thrown in the raft, right? This quote unquote supervillain prison. The reality is that they're executed. Anybody who is considered an undesirable person in society, they're taken to a prison and they're executed. If you're a homeless person sleeping on the street, you're not supposed to be there. You don't have like an actual job that contributes to society. You get one in the dome piece and that's just the way that it goes, right? It's brutal and it's horrifying, but that's the way that it is. And that's what Captain America and the Defenders are fighting against. But the general public,
public doesn't know about this. And so what is up happening are two things. The first is that the defenders managed to hack into basically the radio or the news broadcast being provided on New Year's Eve, because much like in V for Vendetta, it's an enclosed system. So once you get into it, they can't force you out. It goes to every single television in the United States, but then the military gets wind of what their plan is. And while they don't necessarily beat them to the punch, they do call in the Thunderbolts. So where the whole thing was supposed to be this kind of covert operation, the Thunderbolts show up and things go sideways pretty fast, right? Like a civilian gets shot on national TV and it makes the government look more barbaric than it actually is it's pretty intense right captain america is trying to save lives as best he can but even when he sees this he starts to lose it now the crazy thing is that in the middle of it all bullseye's got him dead to rights right like right there in the sights and all bullseye has to do like all she has to do is pull the trigger and this guy's donezo instead she shoots out the tablet in his hand now that'll come home to roost here in a little while because you'll get this really phenomenal moment with the character of bullseye but basically captain america has just enough time while the rest of the defenders hold off the other members of the thunderbolts who were also called away by their commanding officer because innocent folks are getting shot <laughs> captain america makes this impassioned speech to the general public right he says my name is steve rogers you know who i am and you know what i stand for keeping in mind Captain America is kind of a relic of a bygone age. People know of him, but all they know are stories from past exploits. He hasn't been active in years. And he says, your government has stolen away your freedom. The Watcher Act is not there to protect you. It's not there to protect your privacy. It's there to protect them, to make it so you never see what they're doing to the world and to the disenfranchised. It's so light never shines on their crimes. So you never see the helpless people who suffer in order for you to thrive. That's not who we are. We are Americans. We look out for people. We don't turn our backs unless you live in New York City. And now that you know, you can begin to be free again. And so it's crazy because the other intention here was not to just tell people what was going on, but to show them video footage. But the relay is hard cut and the signal's lost. Captain America's speech is cut in the middle of it all. And then like everybody starts storming in, not only just the Thunderbolts, but like police and everything. And so with Captain America and his guys realizing the jig is up, they jump on their bikes and they take off as fast as they possibly can. Tyler, who's kind of like the computer expert in the Thunderbolts, he's injured, but of course Captain America grabs him, picks him up, and they all end up racing off. But then you pick up with this moment, right? This again, is not the ending that I'm talking about. It is cool. It's crazy, but it's not the ending that I'm talking about, right? You pick up with basically Jarvis, the guy who basically raised James Stark after the fall of Tony Stark and all those guys during the events of H Day. Now, but the way that Jarvis is depicted here, he's pretty hardcore and he's pretty corrupt. But what we find out is he has his own scheme, right? He's talking to this guy, this kind of disembodied voice, which tells him, you're losing control. His response, hardly. There are bumps along the way, but if there's one thing that I've learned from you, it's patience. You didn't have enough of it on H day, and so you lost. I watched you lose and thought to myself, how does a robot not have patience? And this guy responds, I am forever skull. And he says, but every second is an infinity. You're losing control and I need you alive in order to fulfill your end of the deal, to free me from your crude prison. And that's when Jarvis says, having your head on ice has been a greater boon than even Starks. And a deal is a deal, robot. Once I've set this world into shape and am ready to depart it, let the robots have their way with it for millennia. Let Ultron bring Earth into its next era of greatness. Now, this is not just Ultron, right? This is one of the coolest things. It's Ultron, but seemingly merged with the mind of the Red Skull. And that's something that we've never seen before in Marvel Comics. In Old Man Logan, Red Skull led all the villains to destroy all the superheroes, minus a few who managed to survive, and either just turned to scraping a life as best they could, or became bad guys and ended up ruling like whole sections of the United States. But we haven't seen an instance where like the Red Skull merged with Ultron to keep himself alive. This is a boon, because what it means is you have a variant or a version of Ultron with all of its knowledge and all of its understanding of technology 
technology combined with the battle strategy of the Red Skull, right? It's crazy. It's like if uh, Tony Stark and Captain America were merged into a single mind, right? It's just, it's nuts. The kicker about all this is that Captain America is told by Luke Cage, right? Who just isn't really as capable as he used to be, but he's told that his speech didn't work. That not only did it not work, people are more against them now than they ever were before. Now, there's a couple reasons for this that kind of fly under the current, but we can kind of pick up on it a little bit, right? One, Captain America kind of targeted the audience that he was speaking to. Whenever you're trying to make a speech and you're trying to rouse people to a cause, you don't tell them you're the problem, right? And that's one of the things that he communicated against. We don't turn our backs on each other. We're Americans, we stick together. It's how we survive. It's basically him saying, you're turning your back on people and you can't do that, right? So you don't wanna be accusatory. But the other part of this is the allegory of Plato's cave, which you've seen play out in a multitude of circumstances. The most popular example of that is the Matrix, right? The scene where Morpheus is talking to Neo and he says, there are people who are still part of the Matrix and who would fight to stay a part of it, kicking and screaming. Why? Because it's what they know. And because it's what they know, it's what's comfortable. We as human beings, we desire comfort more than anything else. And so even if the boat is being rocked, as long as the rocking of the boat is at least predictable or manageable or mildly uncomfortable, we just kind of find a way to make do with it. And so it's kind of nuts because you would think that people would turn against the government and even Captain America believed that because there was a time when Captain America's word in the world was something everyone listened to. But this day and age, that's not the case. But even Luke Cage tells him, snap out of it, man, right? Quit sitting around all day and just being sad, right? Like you were in Age of Ultron, just sitting in the corner crying because all the superheroes died. We don't do what we do to be liked. We do what we do because it's the right thing to do. The reality here is that when you do the right thing, you're gonna piss people off. You can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. So just do the right thing and be damned with the consequences. That's really his argument here, right? And so that's what ends up happening when Steve Rogers is told by Luke Cage, if we're going to pull this off, and even Tyler says it, like if we're gonna pull this off, we need the world's smartest man we have to go get Tony Stark. Now keep in mind, Tony Stark does not exist in his traditional form. He's not just a guy sitting in a cell somewhere. He's like half of a human body, his brain is being used by his son, and that's basically it, right? Like how Tony Stark would be used is really anybody's guess. So what ends up happening is Captain America and Tyler end up making a go for the raft. Now for those of you guys who have not been introduced to the raft in Marvel Comics, it's basically a supervillain prison. But what we're gonna find out is there are far more nefarious things going on in that place than we were initially led to believe. And so once they get there, Captain America tells Tyler, look, here's the thing. It's awesome you wanna come along for the ride and I can certainly use your ability to shut down the computer systems, but understand, this is going to be dangerous. If the raft is anything like I remember, guys like Purple Man and so on are locked up here. People that you've never faced off against in your life and would make the threat of some corrupt cops look like a kid with a pop gun, right? So this is not child's play. Stay behind in the Quinjet, do not come inside. And if I'm not back in like some period of time, then leave without me. But what happens is as Captain America makes his way through the raft, what he ends up realizing is that again, all these different supervillains that have been captured by the government over the years had just been put to death. And what the government did is they took their various technologies or even their powers if they could be utilized and started utilizing them. Not only that, it's not just supervillains, it was also superheroes. Anybody with powers has been outlawed by the federal government. So that's why you have the wings of Archangel. The Venom symbiote is kind of being tortured across several different pods. They have the tentacles of Dr. Octopus. It's pretty brutal, right? And it's pretty extreme. And so Captain America ends up taking one of these suits, right? That belongs to like a scientist, right? Doesn't really kill the guy or anything, but probably knocks him out. And then like gets into Tony Stark's lab using a security card. But that's when he realizes Stark is not the Stark that he recalls. But it seems like he could still be useful in some capacity because his brain still seems to be functioning. Now, what happens is amazing here. And this is when we get to the ending that I was telling you guys about. Because what goes on is Captain America gets into this lab with Tony Stark and then Bullseye starts talking to him. And Captain America realizes it's the guy who didn't shoot him, right? Bullseye could have shot and killed him at any point in time and chose not to. So Captain America asked the question, what's your name? And this guy says, Bullseye. 
And Bullseye says, I figured I'd come for you, pal. Seems like the kind of guy who makes big, bad decisions. At least you do. And that's when he's like, saving a friend is never a bad decision. And there's a kind of back and forth as to whether or not Captain America's philosophies and morality is like considered old hat and corny, which at this point in time in Marvel Comics, in this futuristic story, it kind of is. Because people don't really believe in right and wrong the way that Captain America and the Avengers used to. Now it's just kind of living your life as best you can. But what ends up happening is in the middle of his conversation with Bullseye, James shows up. Now Bullseye is overhearing the entirety of this conversation. And James just kind of makes these series of remarks, really, talking about how Captain America is a guy with geriatric steroids, and that he's mad because the world isn't the one that he remembers, that he's a man from the past trying to fight the future, and that always results in a person losing. But Captain America kind of responds and says like, throwing people in prison never to be heard from again, just because they dared to question the government, that's right to you? And the response to James is, oh please, the country's fed, entertained, and happy. Some whiners want to screw that up for everybody. Well then screw them, throw them in the pit for all I care. And he says, you messed up old man. I'm gonna call the Avengers to take care of you. And that's when he's shot by Bullseye, at least hit in the shoulder with an arrow. Because Bullseye's heard enough to realize it's all been a sham. Right, Bullseye was just a soldier working for the US military and wasn't given higher information because it wasn't Bullseye's job to have the higher information. Bullseye's job was to go there and hit a target because that's what Bullseye was told to do. But now, Bullseye's getting the bigger picture. Not only is the government corrupt and ruled by corporations, the ones who are running the corporation, specifically James, doesn't care. It doesn't matter to him who gets hurt. It doesn't matter to him who gets killed. Collateral damage is irrelevant so long as he maintains his control. And so what they do is they basically let loose the pod that has Tony Stark. They grab the thing and they go to take off only for James to alert the entire base that there's a security breach. Now, the other cool thing that goes on here is that Bullseye has an arrow, right? Has a bow and arrow. And Captain America says, you may call yourself Bullseye, but I know a Hawkeye when I see one. And he says, if you're with me, I've got one rule, no killing, which is the smart move because what it does is it prevents corporations of the government from painting him as a killer, saying, look at this guy that Captain America killed. We've got video footage of it. But as they're making their escape, Captain America finally gets the one thing he's needed this entire time to really bring him back to the fold, to revitalize him. Something that most all of you guys realized he was missing the shield. Captain America finally gets his shield back and it's Dope, because he's just like, let's get out of here, right? I got my shield, we're good. And so like, they bail out, right? They take off, only to be confronted by James, who has now donned a suit of armor for himself. But one of the things that I want you guys to kind of notice here is that James Stark is not as capable and intelligent as his father. And in fact, that's why he kept his father alive, was because he needed his brain to achieve these things. So even though he has an Iron Man suit, it was not built by Tony Stark, so it's not nearly as capable as the Iron Man suits that we've seen in the past. I wanted to point that out because you're not going to see it disintegrate Captain America or anything along those lines, but he is able to hold his own. But there's a kind of back and forth that goes on with these guys, where James asks Bullseye, like, who in the world are you? Like a traitor or a spy? And Bullseye doesn't necessarily give him a direct answer. Instead, the Quinjet that's being piloted by Tyler shows up just long enough to fire at James off for a distraction, James shoots the thing, it goes crashing down, Captain America jumps in, saves Tyler, and then has to get him to safety. Then it looks like James takes off, it looks like he bails out. But this is a maneuver that Captain America is all too familiar with when it came to Tony Stark. Because where Bullseye even says, he's hightailing it, he's getting out of here, we need a lifeboat or something, the response to Steve Rogers, he's not hightailing it. You need to run, because he just comes flying right back down again, and just like does the superhero landing, but takes out the entirety of the area around him. So soldiers are now being lost in the water, lives are being taken as a result of his actions, and James doesn't care. And so you get this great big huge argument, right? Where literally James tells Captain America, you're the past fighting the future. And the response of Captain America, no, I fight for the future. I fight for the future that you wanna keep from coming into existence because it means the ending of all the power that you have and the power gets turned back to an educated population who's aware of what you guys have been doing. The response to James, God, you sound like a bad old movie. <laughs> 
which is kind of true in this day and age anyway, right? At the time this comic is written, it really, really does. And the response of James is like, I don't know why I resisted this for so long. This armor, this power, because he never wanted to be his father. He never wanted to have Iron Man suits or anything like that. But now that he has it, it's almost addicting. But even Captain America tries to tell him like, people are dying, man. People's lives are being taken. But James doesn't care. He says, People die, at least most of them do. He's like, you really wanna save people? All our rules that you hate, they do just that. And all it takes is a few hard measures, a few examples made, a few dreamers put to sleep. And that's kind of the philosophical argument. Sure, we've taken away their freedom, but the life for people who are not superheroes, who don't commit crimes, their life is better. All they have to do is toe the line. All they have to do is live their life based on how we tell them to live it and everything goes great. So the question is like, which one do you side with, right? Like which one do you go with? Most people say they would side with freedom, even if it means a harder life and a crappier society, they would still take that over having a better life in a more strict society so long as that better life comes by way of them doing what they're told to do. And so you have this kind of thing where Captain America says, what gives you the right to make those decisions? Does your money give you the right? Your father's brilliant mind? And he says, you're lost son, right? Nothing gives you the right to do that. And the response to James is, I don't need Tony Stark anymore. I don't need anybody. He takes Tony Stark's head, throws it in the water, right? And the response to Steve, everybody needs someone, right? Everybody needs help. It's what makes all this work. And so that's when you find out that like Hawkeye, Bullseye, whatever you want to call her, and all these soldiers who have basically been whisked away almost to their deaths, never to be seen or heard from again, are rescued by Kamala Khan, who shows up in her giant form and pulls everybody out of the water. I told you it'd be pretty dope, right? She comes in clutch. It's amazing. I don't know if anybody says clutch anymore, but she comes in clutch and it's solid. She takes those guys, brings them over to the defender's side, right? And then you kind of jump back into the fight between Captain America and James. And James says, none of you guys are leaving here alive, right? The response is Steve, no one dies today. And so you finally have James who gets the upper hand on Captain America. And he says, goodbye, Uncle Steve. Your dreams are just a little too dangerous. Your ideologies of a free society, we can't allow that to happen. And then, this is when it happens, son. Lightning strikes down and electrocutes this guy in the middle of a rainstorm. And James is like, what did you do? And Captain America says, what I always do in hard times. I prayed. Only for us to find out, ladies and gentlemen, Thor's here, son! And he's like, it's been a wolf's age, Captain. Shall we assemble? With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you need to get caught up, make sure you click this link to the playlist. You're only one video behind, and I will catch you all later. Peace.